What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be taking you through the military fitness test that I think the British Army should implement. If this video gets over 250 likes, I'll be putting myself through the following test in the next video. So who am I to be making this video? So I spent five years as a Royal Marines Commando. I've now transitioned out and have my own coaching company that prepares people for these tests. So each and every day I sit down with people and get them ready for the test that is currently in place. So we know what they look like, okay, push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups, generally different stuff for the army. However, typically it's running, push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups. Super basic, super low level, and for me, not good enough. I'm now in a position where I've coached thousands of people through this initial test, and I feel like it's time for a change. So while I'm aware that these tests have been in place for years and years, and have clearly created a decent result, okay, we have a very good armed forces, I just feel like we could improve it a little bit, we could get better. So the current test, if we take the Royal Marines fitness test, stands as a bleep test, a push-up test, a sit-up test, and a pull-up test. Okay, so no strength tests, or body weight, and running. If we look at what we get from those tests, it's pretty basic, okay? We get an idea for basic upper body strength, crude idea for core strength, a little bit of pull-in strength, and obviously a VO2 max score. However, to put yourself in a good place to be going through Royal Marines training, for example, we need to actually have some lower body strength and some real core strength. Obviously, VO2 max is important, upper body strength is important, okay, but it needs to be demonstrated in the right way. So that leads me nicely on to my tests, and I'm gonna give you a justification for each and every one of them. So the first test will be a lower body strength test. So we're gonna take the one rep max back squat. Obvious logistical issues with this, okay, having to line up loads of racks. However, that can be easily gotten over just with a little bit of organization. The other thing people will probably say is, okay, this takes a little bit of skill, takes a little bit of functionality, which is correct. But in my opinion, if you can't do a back squat, can't do an air squat, can't do whatever, then you're not very functional in, in the first place. And so you should probably go and work on a little bit of your mechanics anyway. So that's the first barrier to entry. In my opinion, this should be a relative test to have 1.5 times your body weight in the one rep max. So not huge, no powerlifting numbers, okay? We just look at 1.5 times body weight. So if you're lighter, you get a little bit of a lower score, fine. This is a pretty good barometer for if someone's ready to go and load weight on their back and walk or run for a long period of time. Something you'll do early on in training. Typically what happens at the moment is we have no lower body test. We just test their fitness on a bleep test and then they go into mainstream training and they have Bergens on their back within kind of four to five weeks. Is it any wonder that we see such a high percentage of musculoskeletal injuries in that period of time? If we haven't got the necessary strength to deal with the load, we will get injured. That's just a fact, okay? We know that from all the data and all the studies. So if we test and make sure people have that ability before we even start loading them or before we get into mainstream training, then we're in a pretty good place. So 1.5 times your body weight, back squat, one rep max. So for myself, I weigh just around 78 kilos. So that would be around the 115 to 120 mark. Okay, my next test would be a 10 kilometer best effort run. The reason we've chose 10 kilometers rather than five or 1.5 miles is there's an element of grizz to that, okay? To get a 10 kilometer run in a decent time, you have to have the mentality to push past a pain barrier. So the time we're gonna allot for this is 44 minutes. That works out to right around a 7, 10 to 7, 15 minute per mile pace. So a very, very solid pace. So you're not slacking by any means. However, it's not super rapid. We're not asking you to run 630s just to get over the line. In order to run a 10 kilometer best effort in 44 minutes, like I say, you do need an element of aerobic fitness, of course. You also need an element of mental resilience to push past that point where you wanna stop, you wanna slow down, everything in your body's telling you to wrap and you have to push on. So 44 minutes for the 10K. So you can start to see this coming together. We've got the 1.5 times body weight back squat, so we're decently strong. We've then got a 44 minute 10K, so we're decently fit. There's a couple of other components that we need to consider. So the next thing we need to look at is upper body strength. So the pull-up test is gonna stick around. We're just gonna have a little bit of a different parameter around that. So at the moment, the Royal Marines pull-up test, you do four reps, you do it to a timed beep where you hold at the top and hold at the bottom. Really, really tough, really, really good. I would just go dead hang, chin over bar, no swing, no kip, and you need to do 10 reps. I think not being able to pull yourself up 10 times to the bar is gonna be problematic when you get to a rope climb and you have to do multiple reps with, with weight on your back. That's just gonna become an issue. You need good relative strength, and relative strength is strength relative to your body weight 
which again, pull-ups give you. 10 reps is a really good standard. Again, these are all minimum standards. If you want to squat heavier, if you want to go and do a 10K quicker in 40 minutes, or if you want to do pull-ups up until 20, 25 reps, that's fine. We're not going to stop you any any of those points. It's just going to be a minimum standard of 10 reps. I also think as a little bit of an idea of total upper body strength, being able to do 10 solid pull-ups is a really good place to start. So again, we start to get an idea of the type of individual we're looking for for military preparation or for a military course, okay? We've got a decent back squat, so lower body strength. We've got a decent 10K and we've got the ability to do 10 solid pull-ups. We have two more tests to run you through. So a core test and a functionality test. So our core test is very, very simple. We're gonna do knees to elbows or a variation of. So we're gonna hang from the bar, tucking your knees up towards your chest and making sure we're contracting the abs as we do so. So curling up into a nice tight ball. And we're gonna look for 15 again, solid reps with no swing or no kick. This as a test is easy to conduct if we've already got pull-up bars, easy to judge in terms of we just have someone moderating swing, making sure they're not using any momentum, and we just need 15 reps. Very, very simple. So far, these are also tests that we can do at home, at our own gym or whatever it is, and we can test them and test our ability. A strong core is vital during military training because we need the ability to carry load. If we break down from a core standpoint, then lower back's gonna suffer, okay, hips are gonna suffer, everything else is gonna fall down because our core wasn't strong enough. So this test of just the ability to generate some basic strength from the core is gonna be essential. Okay, one more major test. So we've got a few ancillary tests to come with it, but that's gonna be very, very quick. One more major test is gonna be a farmer's carry. The reason for this, okay, is very simple. It's just moving goods and services and whatever we've got, ammo tins or food, whatever, from one point to another. This also transitions if we need to carry a stretcher, okay, it's the same position, hands by your side, grips fatigued, okay, core's, core's active and we're moving. So for this, we're gonna go two 32 kilo kettlebells, max distance in four minutes. For this, our minimum standard is gonna be 300 feet. Again, something we can do in most gyms, we can even load it up if we haven't got access to kettlebells and get some heavy water bottles or whatever it may be, heavy back, backpacks, load them up and run with them. Nice and easy, okay, four minutes, max distance, we're looking for 300 feet. What does this test? Test grip strength. Grip strength is a massive indicator of overall fitness or overall well-being. Having a weak grip is problematic for many reasons. Again, I mentioned rope climbs, huge grip element on that, okay? If we're struggling to clamp our knees together to grip the rope and stand up, then obviously we're hanging on by our forearms and musculature attached to that. So a strong grip is essential. The ability to move with load across ground is obviously an important thing for a military population, so we're gonna look at that as well. These five tests are pretty balanced across the board as main core objectives to get you through military training. I believe if you can do these tests, you're in a really, really good place when you go into mainstream training. Obviously, there's a caveat at the moment that we don't just wanna be focusing on these tests I've mentioned. We need to be focused on push-ups, pull-ups, and sit-ups because they're the tests at the moment. But this is what I change them to. So if I was running this as an assessment, those would be my key performance indicators. So my KPIs, so I need 1.5 times body weight squat, I need a 44 minute 10K, I need 15 strict knees to elbows, I need 10 dead hang pull-ups, and I need a 300 feet jerry can carry or kettlebell carry effectively. Those are my KPIs. My secondary test would just be to gauge an individual's propensity for injury, okay? So we're gonna do a few things, super low level, super easy. And again, this could all be done in one day feasibly. So we have two tests to gauge kind of injury. They're both centered around the lower body, okay? The first one's gonna be a balance test. Looks pretty stupid if you're gonna do it by yourself, but okay, you can get loads of people to do it at the same time. So everyone's gonna close their eyes, they're gonna stand on one leg, and we need 30 seconds of balance essentially. Try this at home, it's harder than you think. The second assessment is gonna be the soleus raise or the bent knee calf raise, and that's gonna be 20 reps on one leg. So single leg, soleus raise, 20 reps. We know from research and literature and studies, okay, that this ability to do 20 reps is conducive with not getting shin splints down the line. So if you're gonna be strong enough within the soleus muscle, which is a muscle that takes a lot of your body weight when you run, then you're gonna be better off when you go to run in boots and go and carry load and all that sort of stuff. And we get these injuries that are around impact and around not being strong enough lower limb. This 20 soleus raises is gonna be huge. So guys, hope you enjoyed that video and found it interesting. Okay, five main tests, KPIs, two ancillary tests, to gauge injury prevention and injury propensity for individuals. 
Again, super easy to do in one day. Drop the video a like and subscribe down below because again, if this video gets over 250 likes, next video is gonna be me going through all of these tests. You're gonna see me hang out on a 10K. You're gonna see me try and carry some weight for a period of time, okay? It's gonna be, it's gonna be a good time. So drop me a like, subscribe to the channel, okay? And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.